mine. It's a personal burden of mine. I too went to church school, mm-hmm. and that has been a challenge. The sci because sciences is a, it's it's an expensive field, and sometimes or private schools find it challenging to keep up with the science components of the curriculum and so many persons who had dreams like that had to abandon their dreams because they weren't able to get the foundation but you know it's not too late right yeah it's too late for me i fall in love with something else oh okay okay so here you are after having been exposed to the the bursting water, the sounds of labor, the baby coming, that kind of thing, then you realize that you had to take a different path. So, what did that? What was that path like? It was rough because mm-hmm. I. It, it took me a while to actually understand that I was an artist. Mm-hmm. In the visual sense. Okay, so take me down that road. So you leave high school, eleventh grade. 12th grade and you realize oh my goodness this dream of becoming an obstetrician is not going to materialize no i i i guess when they were when they were calling my name across the stage and it's you know she wants to be uh they would say that she wants to major in right in high school graduations Mm -hmm. and then i heard it i was like oh i don't know really yeah because not because i didn't wasn't gonna do it Mm -hmm. but it's just like it sounded so hefty. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, because I wanted to do it since I was little, at mm-hmm, five. Mm-hmm. But when I understood, you know, because I knew I didn't get a lot of what I needed. I already felt that when I was graduating. Mm-hmm. So, when I went to my second year of college, I went to another school in Alabama. And... I tried to do tutoring at the end of, like, after school, I would try to get what I missed. Mm-hmm. And the tutors would be frustrated with me because they were saying, but you don't know this. And yes, you know the and gap was too they great. They didn't teach that. Right, mm-hmm. right. Okay. So then you were faced with the inevitable. I've got to change. I've got to find another area of concentration. Yeah, so every semester I would be changing something. Mm. And say, Everything that I am interested in, I'm going to try. And so, what were some of the things you tried along the way? I tried dietetics, mm-hmm. nutrition. I tried uh, computer, mm-hmm. um, um, what you call IT. Mm-hmm. I tried, um, let me see, nursing because mm-hmm. it was close. And mm-hmm. I said maybe I could be a midwife. Okay, mm-hmm. but that didn't work out. And then when I came back here I went to college again in University of the Virgin Islands and I said let me try but I never got bad grades in English oh, okay <laughs> okay I love to write since I was little too oh okay mm-hmm. so you used to used to write a lot when you were smaller what do you used to write poems po- oh. stories you know fiction stuff like that oh did you actually have any of those retained from that time do you have any of those things that you did earlier on when you were a child? Do you still have any of those? No. Okay. I think hurricanes destroy oh. a lot of them. Oh, boy. Hurricanes, hurricanes. Mm-hmm. So you came to the, the University of the Virgin Islands and decided to try something that you knew was naturally you, which was English. Okay. And what, 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 how, how did that pan out? What did you do in college? Oh, here in, um, I had to get a job (laughs) because I took out student loans Mm -hmm. for those other colleges and they were ringing my phone saying, you know, it's six months after you left college, so you need to, Mm -hmm. so my mom was like, you should, you should get a job and then still go to school or Mm -hmm. you can even do like a work study program. So Mm -hmm. I said, I'll do the job because the work study is not going to pay much Mm -hmm. and so I, w- I think I worked overnight as a stock porter and then I did school in a day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what were you studying at that time? I was studying um, English, lit- English Lit or I think that. And then they would go on to creative writing. If I went on the, to the end, it was all the way to the end 
Mm -hmm. My fourth year would be creative writing, which is what I wanted to do. Okay, okay. So did you did you complete that? Mm -hmm. You didn't complete it, but because the night thing, the, the mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to sleep. So it was like study, yes, go to school, yes. go to work. Mm -hmm. Where's the sleep part? Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So that can be a challenge, mm -hmm. but that did not abort your future did it no i was always willing to learn something mm -hmm. so i was already studying on my own um like um, vocal pedagogy which mm -hmm. is like the study what of, is that the study of the human voice how did you how uh, th listen test this is this is this is this is interesting now so you're doing english and you're working in the nights. You're doing English in it, the days. In order to be a writer, you have to read. You have to be an avid reader. Uh huh. So, right, yes. so in your reading, you came across vocal pedagogy. No, I was just, I just, when I said I was little, I wanted to be voice lessons, but my parents put me in um, piano lessons instead. Oh, so you also wanted to sing from you were a little little girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I you sang, but it's just I wanted to. I say I want if I'm going to do lessons, I, mean, I want to do that instead of my mom was like do piano lessons first then you could do that but mm -mm. <laughs> so you did some piano mm -hmm. and then when you were uh reading around you got interested in voice pedagogy and where did that take you it took me to my first student what do you mean your first student my first voice student as in you were now teaching a voice mm -hmm. but you are something else mm -hmm. you are absolutely something else so you just had an interest in this thing you did it on your own yeah totally self-taught yeah Ooh. still learning mm -hmm. and then had a student because mm. I noticed the same thing with that was happening around here was happening what had happened with me was happening around here with mm -hmm. little girls or boys wanting to sing but they're always put in something else mm -hmm. and they didn't really have a lot of teachers they have the teachers but the teachers travel a whole lot and it's like you know it's not mm -hmm. available they have they don't really have the violin teachers and stuff like that the, mm -hmm. people, the things that people really want to do they have to settle for steel pan or choir or you know something piano mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you became inadvertently an advocate for children or individuals who had to sideline their first love yeah that's interesting that is interesting so who was your first student i don't know if did she know her? angelica sterling mm -hmm. did she go on to pursuing, pursuing that area no she's she's she'd become a better singer yes but mm -hmm. that's not her her main thing but yeah. she but she, she did went into what i wanted to do when i was little which is being a doctor she oh, okay wanted to be a doctor so it's like something switch we like flip <laughs> <laughs> i became the musician and she's into medicine okay. so she just re um, graduated from i forget the college but mm -hmm. she graduated from college okay okay but that's nice you were able to now and i started feed teaching her at seven at seven mm -hmm. oh so you were now able to feed a dream that you had in somebody else i hope my listeners are paying attention that sometimes something that was that you wanted to give birth to you may actually be able to facilitate its birth in someone else ouch here we have in studio tess greenaway who had dreams of becoming an obstetrician and because of circumstances redirected her energies but in along the path found herself uh, helping others give birth to their own passions she is a self-taught uh voice uh vocalist yeah and uh she has helped others to fine tune to, uh, and to take seriously the whole idea of using your voice